I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Sonar pulse, a beacon in the night, guiding her path, shining oh so bright. Enemies tremble when her shadow nears, for she brings the storm that they fear. Ruler of the deep, silent and profound, in the arms of war where her foes are bound. She strikes with grace, a force unseen in the world of warships. She is the queen. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Did I get a fun video with uh, man and spoiler alert on the uh, thumbnail there you clicked on? Yeah, this was, I believe, close to a solo warrior. And uh, I don't think it may, after looking at the video, it probably I needed maybe one more ship to make it happen. But before we get in, like, subscribe button below. Appreciate all the support of the channel. You see value in this. Hit that button at the bottom and help us uh, grow the channel, build a community, make this a better place to learn how to uh, play World of Warships and have fun doing it at the same time. So let's get right to it. The Kitakaze, Tier 9 Japanese Haragumo gunboat level style. This is literally, if you don't know what it is, the ship right before Haragumo, and it's pretty awesome. Four sets of guns. Um, at Tier 9, not many ships with four sets of guns, dual barrel. Very, very powerful, very awesome. And, man, this thing, I, I, I really enjoy playing the Japanese gunboat destroyer line. It's so much firepower. Smoke, engine boost, reload boosters with torpedoes. Just phenomenal firepower. They're just really at your fingertips and really great reloads. And I really enjoy it. And even good concealment as well. So, But um, as you can see right there, we're not going to fire on the Akazuki, our sister ship, uh, which is a tier 8, I believe. Yeah, let's take a look at it here. You can take a look at the map. Again, good destroyer players. We'll analyze the um, battle layout first. Akazuki at tier 8. Yep, we definitely overmatch. Or kind of not overmatch, but... We have our similar, pretty similar darn ships. Uh, I would say maybe uh, a little fast, a little fast reload, a little better torpedoes, and maybe a little bit more hit points. I mean, he's pretty much comparable to us. I mean, we have almost identical stats there. So, Akazuki, we're not going to shoot at him. We're going to kind of play this a little more conservative. Let him either push out of the cap. Then, you know, most of the short players or players in World of Warships general. Typically, if they're either contesting or spotted by radar or hydro or whatever that may be, typically get a little spooked and um, want to back out. So he's backing out. So we take that advantage, take the cap again. Again, we kind of do the similar same concept of we're not going to push this cap too, too aggressive because we don't know what's here. And as a good destroyer player, you want to analyze the situation first before you make a um, more educated decision because you don't know what's there. And I've been caught so many times by radar minos or radar ships or whatever that may be supporting a destroyer when none of your team is supporting you. So you got to be careful on that. You have to look at where who is your support as well. Looking in the back, I knew I had a Seattle and an Amagagi right there. Or Amagi. And he got a submarine in the middle. So, yeah, I was a little bit more aggressive to cap this one at this point because we've analyzed it and say, hey, I've got this. So <clears throat> that, that allows us to be a little bit more you know, uh, push forward and aggressive so we can get there and do what we need to do. We're going to speed this up a little bit. Uh, as a good destroyer player, we're going to go and cap points for our team. Their their team is kind of pushing a little further back now, so we're going to see if we can capture Bravo and help our Iowa out. And notice he's getting shot at, so it's being reset. So obviously he can't do it. So again, Battleship, very good on you for actually pushing. I just did a video saying his Battleship player, Battleship gameplay being kind of uh, nerfed or just uh, being coming obsolete because... Everybody's hanging in the back. But actually, there are a few occasions where I see one or two players actually do push up, and then that actually pulls everybody with you. So if we're to solution to that, hey, Battleship players, uh, work together, com communicate. And again, this is a team aspect game. Move together, move forward, up, and then your players will move up and so forth. And you will, again, a, a rising tide raises all ships, right? Well, hey, you be that person to lead from the front and communicate and then everybody else goes and, and suit and that's why i like the destroyer gameplay because you're always in the front you're always leading you're always encouraging and not every time not all the time um that do people actually follow that uh and actually follow you in and i agree Ooh, nice torpedo hit there and i, I want to encourage that gameplay because we need to bring world of warships back to that teamwork based gameplay where everybody's pushing forward and everybody's uh, working together look notice we kept Two spots now. Now, so where are we needed the most right now? It looks like Alpha Cap is floundering. Uh, it looks like we lost a lot of our ships over there. So we're going to have to go in and support. Let's start by removing the Seattle right here. Seattle is at, uh, I believe, Tier 9. Yep, Tier 9, a radar cruiser. American uh, HE, pretty deadly, you know, force turrets. So we're going to have to eliminate this guy. He is pretty powerful. 
Uh, the range of the um, Kitsukaze, and usually uh, I play around the 12 now. I notice these shells are really lofty. Look at the arcs of these shells. So it's really difficult to aim outside of 12. So 12 does, is very comfortable for me at this point. Uh, I like these loftier arcs a little bit closer range. So, and again, you can see I'm still effective. And boom, splash one, one of many kills a day. We take out their radar cruiser, which is a very important key aspect. That would be my second priority when it comes to eliminating uh, ships. First one being the de the destroyer. You eliminate destroyers, you eliminate a majority of the probability that they're going to win, the other, the opposing team. Number two is you want to eliminate your biggest threat, which is radar cruisers. When you do that, you can kind of move them out about the map with full autonomy because really majority of the time, uh, I mean, the only other guy that can outspot me is this, this submarine. But the majority of the time, radar cruisers are the bane of my existence because they can radar a cap that I'm trying to do because that's my job. I'm supposed to, you know, cap points and objectives to tick up points for the team. Notice I'm the only one really capping points really right here, right? And then I'm also there to destroy other um, destroyer players that are trying to cap objectives. So those are two priorities right there that allow you to really maximize the probability of your victory. So let's go ahead and start another fire on this Monarcher here. Again, Kitakaze and Harugumo, the, the, the gunboat line of the Japanese destroyer lines are very, very powerful when it comes to really just blowing up the battleships, starting a lot, a lot of fires. Torpedoes are already self-explanatory, but man, do we start a lot of fires in this thing? Oh my gosh! I mean, I like because when I mean, you got four sets of double barrel guns, you're gonna start fires. And notice, I'm aiming at the superstructure again. New players to this game, the superstructure is your your friendly your uh, your friend here when it comes to uh, destroyer gunboat play because that's the lowest armor you can shoot at, very easy to aim at, and you start a lot of fires on it. If they're not running fire prevention, which uh, if you have that captain skill, it removes one fire. That is potential, and if you ever want to notice how that is, just look at their superstructure there, and you see one big fire, they have fire prevention. If not, you can start two fires, one on the front and one on the back of the uh, superstructure. So now that we've eliminated the Monarch right there, we're going to go ahead and push into the cap, and I'm a little worried about the submarine. I, I hate submarine gameplay so much because I have no counter against it. Look, he can pop up, spot me, and go back underwater. It, it's and Remember, I, I, I'll, I'll talk about this right now. So he, he popped up right there. He outspots me. So look at this. He outspots literally almost everybody on the team. So 6.0. Okay, so this is actually a good matchup. But there are other submarines that have 5.6, 5.5, 5.2. I mean, ridiculous concealments for a submarine. And here's an and another thing. He can go underwater, which is a, literally an, an infinite smoke screen because at least my smoke screen covers just a little portion of the area, right? If I pop smoke, it only covers a certain area. It stops, right? Look, he goes underwater. It's an infinite smoke screen. It's like the smoke screen of space. It's like he can go anywhere he wants, and he can use the entire ocean, water, body, whatever you want to call it. The body of water is literally his infinite smoke screen, which he can move out and play with. Now watch, his tactic is this. If you want to understand submarine gameplay, it's so darn stupid. Where you pop up, you spot me, I fire, I reveal my entire position to everybody. He goes back underwater, and I, there's no way to spot him again. There's no counterplay to this, because now he can go back underwater, at will and then he can come back up uh, above water spot again and then go under and then when he pings me and the only thing i can use to mitigate that ping is this this damage consumable which by the way has a cooldown timer of 40 seconds so i can only, i can only use you once every 40 seconds he can ping me infinite amount of times even if i damage con that he can come back and do it again it's all again it is a ineffective counterplay to a submarine that has infinite possibilities it, it literally is like I said, this is the the anti-ship system in a World of Warship system game. I mean, you are literally introducing a system, and again, I'm ranting on this because it's stupid, and I'm showing you the whole point of this. Look, what am I supposed to do now? Can't spot him. Okay, oil slick. What am I supposed to do on oil slick? Shoot the oil slick? Okay. You may go depth charge him. My depth charge, I have to drive over him. And by the way, if I try to drive over him, I'm getting spotted. And then again, his ship goes faster than me, which is ridiculous. A, a submarine that goes faster than me underwater? I mean, look at this. 34.6 knots, maximum speed, right? Yeah, I can only go 36, but he can, he can go underwater, so who cares? And for some reason, it feels like he's going faster. Even though the numbers say that, he, it feels like he's going way faster than me. He can ping me and shoot water torpedoes like crazy, and I have no way to counter. Where, where's the counterplay? Oh, and by the way, my RPF does not detect him while he's underwater. Wow, so what's the point of this? What's the point of hydrophone? What's the point of hydroacoustics? What's the point of RPF? What, what, it doesn't make sense. He is literally the most immune system in the game next to aircraft carriers, right? I digress. So the counterplay, what do I do? I can't think of any counterplay right now to the salmon right now. I mean, I can cap this point. Yay. That's fun. 
but I all I can do is drive towards the submarine, and there's no, I can't shoot him right now. That's what that X means. It means like nobody is allowed to shoot this guy. X means I'm immune. Nobody shoots me. I'm underwater. It's like a, it's a, it's like a double smoke screen shield. Like I get a smoke screen that hides my concealment, but I also get a shield that nobody allows me to shoot at because I'm underwater. So stupid. War gaming, fix it. Okay, so finally, now that he's okay, now that he's above water, finally, my RPF switches. Well, what kind of mechanic is that? So you're saying all of a sudden he goes above, slightly above the water. All of a sudden, my RPF works. Totally busted, broken. Okay, finally, so now because he has a timer on his uh oh, and look at that, look what he just said. We get to shoot at him one time, and boom, he goes back underwater again. Completely disappears like a UFO, underwater. Total rant. This is the stupidest system in the game. I again. If you want, in reality, this is great, because why? You're introducing a submarine is a system that makes it unfair fight, which is what you want in warfare. If you're going to do this in a simulation game where you're charging money for people, you want people to have fun, play games, and encourage new players to come to the game, then don't introduce a system that literally swings and makes something broken OP to the other side where you are literally just going to say, or have a person just rage quit and not and not play your game anymore and not spend money anymore. A, a war game, is that, is that your solution? You don't want players to play the game so they don't want to spend money in your game and you're eventually going to flounder. You're going to kill the game, I'm telling you. So uh, right now, that's what we, all we can do right now. We're going to take on this Kronstadt here because we're, we're still going to make the best of the situation, right? We're, even though we can't kill the submarine somehow, let's go kill a ship that we can ship. We're, we're, we're still positive about this, right? Let's find a solution to the problem. So if I can't kill a submarine, let me go kill somebody else. So let's see, Kronstadt's running away. Okay, so we're gonna turn back around. Uh, I'm not too worried, I don't think he has a radar, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, look at that, submarine can just spot, uh, just literally sit there, come back up above the surface and cap point A. Okay, nothing I can do about that. So we're just gonna run away at this point, and let's see here, okay. All right, now we're gonna go one-on-one, toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Kronstadt. I like it, but the thing I like about the, uh, the gunboat DD is you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with almost anybody. Just as long as you can juke shells, you know how to aim, and you know how to continuously, uh, you know, put fire on the target. That's all you get to know. Notice the, the, the submarine can ping me all day long. So if I damage con this, he just ping me again, and it, it, I can't do anything about it. So, you know, why waste it? The counterplay is do nothing. Just like with carriers, just dodge, right? Can't do anything. So Kronstadt, ooh, is in a nice path. Again, this is why gunboat DDs with torpedoes are awesome, because you have multi-role ways of killing. Uh, a, a cruiser or a battleship, and wham, boom, there it is, splash two, 85,000 damage, and literally with six minutes left, I know it's slow game, it takes a long time, but this is where it's fun. When you're literally packed up against the odds, you have so many people against you, including a d dumb submarine, which is just going to say, okay, look, he's going to ping me again. Ow, I got pinged. Now he's got homing torpedoes, homing missiles, sidewinder, ho heat-seeking kind of style gameplay. Wow, fire and forget. Really not uh, fun gameplay in a World War II setting, right? So, anyways, uh, let's go back to the center of the map here. Let's see if we can take out some battleships. All right, we're going to make the best of everything. All I can do is run away. Just like carriers, all I can do is run away from a submarine, run away from the anti-ship system, right? The anti, uh, the vaccine to the problem. So here we go. We're going to sh shoot the F. Caracciolo. And really all I can do is start fire, which is really incredible. Look at the reload rate on these guns. Two and a half seconds with, um, if I get Fearless Brawler going even lower, 2.3-ish, 2.2-ish. Now we love starting fires. Notice the superstructure here. We're firing so we can get one. Okay, now notice he doesn't have superintendent because there's a fire in the back and you can get another fire in the front. If Now if it was this whole thing was engulfed in one fire, then that was fire prevention. So you can know the differences there. There's the second fire. So, so I got two fires right now, and that is passive income on damage. He is constantly going down. Even if he pops the seals, it'll take him out. Now I'm firing against two problems here. Like I have a battleship there and a battleship to the left of him. So I need to literally decide, okay, if you're going to fire at somebody, I usually just stick with them all the way through. Uh, the Izumo will eventually die to the other guys shooting at him in Seattle. So I'll rely on my Seattle, but let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, do I start another fire on the other guy? Uh, come on, get another fire. Okay, I switched the Izumo now because... You know what? Let's help out our Seattle. Let's actually work as a team and focus fire on one target. So we get one target out, one less set of guns to deal with. So we're going to go out of our smoke here and get that fearless brawler going. Like 2.2 second reload right there. Now let's see. We can get down a 7,500 Zumo here with only four minutes left. We have the point lead. So 
If we lose our Seattle and lose Charlie, this could be a problem because I need to go cap Bravo at least to secure this thing. And there we start another fire. That is eight fires, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's see if we can get another fire going to get this passive income of fire going. Ooh, another fire. There's the back end of that ship. You see that fire? Pops on the back. That is a guaranteed kill right there. He goes down. He takes a shot. Slam on the brakes to dodge these shells coming right at me. There they go to the right. There it is. Perfect dodge. Now we get the F Karacha. Let's see if we can get him out first. And hopefully we can get a Bravo cap as well. So I'm doing three things at once here. Taking on a submarine. I got had to. De okay. I you see those? He pinged me, and those torpedoes had that I've been detected. See, that's why I saved the damage con for engagements this close because I there is no way I can dodge these homing torpedoes this close in, right? If, he, if they start homing right here, but then they start breaking off again, I believe it's one kilometer or something like that. Go look it up. But they, according to wargaming, they are supposed to stop homing within a one click of this area. So I usually just damage con that because then there's no way I can dodge. I mean, I'm a ship. What am I supposed to do? I'm not a fighter. I can't just dodge like airplanes do, right? I'm gonna also try to cap Bravo and. And at the same time, shoot the, the Karachalo and get a fire on him. So there goes that first tor tor torpedo. Now I'm defenseless. Now look, if he pings me one more time, I have no way to counter this. That's it. I, I'm screwed. So, well, great gameplay, right? So let's see if we can shoot the Karachalo, get another fire on him. We lose our Seattle. I am literally the only player up. Actually, this could have been a solo warrior. Had I won this game, I have four ships left. You don't know. If you win the game with four sh enemy ships left, you are uh, a solo warrior, which is awesome. So let's see if we can do it right here. Let's see. Let's blast uh, the submarine. Let's get... Okay, easy kill right there. Finally, some kind of counterplay. The only reason he had to surface, I believe, is because he ran out of battery time, which I believe is the, the system, or it's either air or battery, whatever it is, but uh, he can only stay underwater for a certain amount of time unless he comes back up and recharges that, that ability. So he can't stay underwater indefinitely. So just by the grace of luck, did I get he had to surface right on top of me? So way to go finally. Okay, so we got one kill down. We gotta get three more ships to kill here. Uh, let's see if we can get the Massachusetts. Now Massachusetts is very, very deadly. I love Massachusetts, by the way. American battleship that has great heals, great guns, great secondaries. Let's see if we can get a fire. That's two fires right there. We are up to eleven fires, ladies and gentlemen. Now notice he's turning away. He's gone, oh my gosh, this fire breathing little uh, you know, ship of death is putting so many fires on me, he's taking away my HP, and I'm tier nine, he's tier eight. So Let's see if we can outdo this guy. Okay, here he is. Ooh, we we're blowing up a lot of his secondary. So his secondary is becoming less and less effective right there. And let's see if we can blow him up. Okay, he's down to 9,000. We're getting a little bit better hits there. See, constant hits. Keep on going. Keep being consistent. Now, consistency and persistence is the name of the game. I don't care your skill, whatever. You cannot beat persistence. Somebody that's really determined to get an objective will beat somebody that's just not trying all day long. I don't care what ship you have. If you are consistent, persistent enough, you will win the objective all day long, baby. And there it is. He's on fires. He can't damage gone. Boom. Kraken. Actually, Kraken. Holy cow. I forgot about it. I got a Kraken on this part. But no worries. Let's see if we can get this guy out. Now, 68,000 battleship versus a 8,000 destroyer. Notice the power of what we're, we're facing up against, uh, up against right here and what we're facing with a destroyer. That's why I say destroyers win the game, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, these things are powerful things. I encourage you to play destroyers because you are way more impactful in the game. The better reload. <laughs> Someone's saying rip or kill him. Yeah, go, okay. No problem. I'll do it. Don't worry, guys. I got this. Uh, I'll, uh, I've got this thing. I'm in. The, I got him where I want him, right? So here's Bravo. We're capping Bravo. We're killing battleships. We're killing another battleship. We're trying to secure the victory here for our team that already has already left the game probably 10 minutes ago. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if, look at all the reload. We're 2.1 second reload. This is why I like the Haragumo line so much. So, so much firepower. Tier 9 Kitakaze is uh, just one less set of guns than the Haragumo. But man, tier, tier 9 Kitakaze is so powerful. Had only I had Yamamoto on this thing, my reload would have been super fast. I just didn't. I, I put my Yamamoto on the tier 10 Haragumo. T takes a torpedo hit. Oh my gosh. Look at that right there. Whoa, almost killing this guy right off the bat. We need fires. This guy must have fire prevention or something because I can't say even start a fire on this guy for the love of me. Okay, there we go. What is this? Okay, he's got one fire on him. I mean, I don't know if... Man, it's so difficult to start a fire on this guy. No, I don't know what it is with the aiming system. It's just throwing my shells off. If he turns, it just throws it off. That's why I'm, you see I'm just kind of moving the cursor all over the place, putting the 8, the 6. I'm putting the 10, 8, and 6 all over him just to get just on, on where I want to hit. So there it is. Yeah, I think he does have fire prevention because this whole section is on fire now. That's that's why it's so difficult to get a fire. And actually, I don't think we have 19 seconds to win this thing. I mean, come on, 836. How could we not? Oh, sorry, this is reverse, by the way. This is backwards, so don't, don't pay attention to that. So they're up by, eight, you know, 300 points. I have to kill the last two guys, and unfortunately, it's just not enough. Six seconds left. And come on, baby, come on. We just need this kill. Come on, give me another kill. 
Oh, just barely. And we got six kills right before the end of the match. And man, but we would have lost anyways based on points. I tried to capture it, but I did the best. Holy crap. Tier 9 Kitakaze, 28,000 HP, 213,000 damage. We fired 848 shots. Six kills, 14 fires, and a Kraken. Holy crap. I almost had that solo war. I wish I'd gotten four kills on that one. Um, yeah. Just, just, we just did a lot of damage here. Let's take a look at the stats here. 213,000 damage, 39 torpedo damage, 48,000 and fires. We spotted literally uh, 38,000 for spotting for our team, but look, 1.8 potential damage in a destroyer. That's ridiculous. That means uh, 1.8 million dam worth of ordnance was shot at us, and we were just juking and dodging like crazy. We traveled 85 kilometers, which is, I was literally running laps there. That was pretty awesome. Spent the entire 20 minutes of the match literally trying to win this thing. So, anyways, the build will be at the end of the video. Hope you like the video. Let me know your thoughts on the comments below. As always, thanks for supporting the channel, and hope you guys are doing well. If you see me out there, say hi. It is always a blast to talk to you guys. Have fun learning these stuff at the same time. I don't know everything. I'm always trying to learn and get better as well. Hope you guys are being safe out there. And again, until you, we see you guys next time, take care. Cheers.